My name is Roger Mansell, and I'm the retired director of the Center for Research Allied Prisons of War of the Japanese. And my purpose today is to talk about the process of researching and the process of sharing information. Over the years, when I started this project, it was before the internet. I began uh, to research the prisons of war and of the Japanese, and in doing so, I found that I could not, could not talk or research enough to tell the full story. So I selected a small microcosm, the men of Guam, and from that. I developed the concept of researching all the POWs. I began with uh, without a database and merely records that I could find in the National Archives uh, in Washington, D.C. And after a number of years, I was able to work with the um, National Archives. Um, they had all of the uh, POW records on IBM cards during World War II. They transferred it on a program to magnetic tape. Unfortunately, uh, the program they used became very, very obsolete, and they were unable to give me anything other than a line delimited um, base set of information on each man. But it wasn't alphabetical, and it was not by serial number, but it was all one line. So you had to sort out all the 22, 23 different uh, areas that they had. Under the publisher parish doctrine, uh, the professor would get the information and it was mine. You can't have it. I wouldn't share it because I'm going to write a book. Well, truth of the matter is, I've seen many books written on the exact same subject. No two are the same. And it's the quality of your research and the quality of your writing that will make or not make your book a success. It has nothing to do with hoarding your information. I am right now writing a book about the men of Guam, and it's being edited by uh, the noted historian Linda Gets Holmes right now. She's helping me to complete it, hopefully before I um, uh, pass through this life and get it published late this uh, fall, and perhaps for a release next spring. It'll be The Forgotten Men of Guam, which I was going to call it the Zenzusians, based on the camp they were at, but uh, no one would understand that. However, the information I have, I've added onto the web so it can be shared by anybody. If you are writing a story of a family member of a POW or just POWs in general, I specifically waive the copyright for anyone who does that type of work. Uh, the copyright is there to protect myself and you from those who uh, will copy an entire website, present it as their own research, and while they are hustling you a product, while they're trying to sell you something. Um, we sell nothing. Uh, we take no advertising. It simply, these are the facts. I make no conclusions. I just say, these are the facts. Um, feel free to use it. In that sense of sharing, when you do research on a unit, whether it be uh, the Royal Scots or uh, uh, the Beds and Hertz, as you develop your information, seek out others who do the same type of research and share it with them, give it to them. If you have a roster of uh, the HMS Exeter, find out who's doing work on it, share it with them. Try to reestablish an HMS Exeter website. Uh, someone who can keep that information flowing and adding to it over the years, memoir, memorandums. In that idea of sharing, we have our database in Excel spreadsheets on the net, on a hidden, hidden website that you can, anyone can access. If you go to our website, mansell.com, and put backslash xxx.html. Again, that's xxx.html. That page will come up for you. And you can download freely the last entries I made on the database. These are spreadsheets. I think there's about 12 of them. And there's some units, um, but we have others. 
that we haven't put up there. Uh, I know we have the Royal Scots, we have uh, the men of Hong, a fair number of the men of Hong Kong, very simple one, uh, courtesy of um, uh, Tony Banham in uh, Hong Kong. By the way, he's written a wonderful book, he has a wonderful website, and shares that information freely with everyone. In, that's, in this matter, if you write a book, find a place to put all your website references and information, put that on the web. Put the images that you've scanned, put it on the web so others can see the original. Cite the original. Where did you find it? What record group, what file? If it's a, a war office file, a WO file, uh, cite it. That way other people can go and maybe find what they're hunting for in that file or use that as a citation when they publish. The whole thing is do not reinvent the wheel. Don't do research twice. Help your friends, help those to tell the story of the POWs. And you do it by sharing your information. If you were to take all of my research, you're looking at 20,000 hours of work. I've been there's nine separate trips to the National Archives. The last five of them I was able to use a digital camera. Before that, we weren't. You, just, you took notes and you um, made Xerox copies. So at the end of a week, I might come back with a hundred Xerox copies, a page full of notes, and it would take me a month to get to organize it so I could share it with anyone. Now I take digital photographs. I have a tripod set up with the camera facing down. I just simply take the uh, pages and flip them one at a time and photograph everything in a file. When I come home, I then label each file, or group of files, as to where from, record group 24, uh, box number 38. And I'll say, this is the Yokohama uh, rescue file, or the Yokohama labor file, or the uh, record group 407, box 122 could be the Lisbon Maru file. Well, those I take and I burn DVDs and I send them to other researchers around the world. Simple request, we send it to you. But there were some I automatically sent, like Wes Inyard, uh, uh, Ron Bridge, uh, Taylor, um, Jonathan Moffitt, uh, Meg here, the, who's conducting this se uh, session today. We share the information because I don't want you to go back and have to do the whole thing again. You can look at the files and say, well, this is, I'm not interested in, but you can extract those that you are interested in and add them to your depth of research. At that point, if, if you hoard it to yourself, it's as if you never lived a life. Everyone will know you shared. Uh, I can't tell you how many times Jonathan Moffat has been of great help to me. A typical researcher, and I think one of the finest uh, I could cite, uh, Rod Beatty, uh, hired to be a groundskeeper uh, in the uh, uh, graveyards that uh, handled the men of the uh, Burma Thailand Death Railway. He took it upon himself to find out what, where these men are from, what happened to them, who are they? And then, over the years, on his vacations and time off, weekends, he started hunting for the location of the camps, photographing them, determining, doing a little basic archaeology, going through records, trying to find out where men were buried on that site. Who was buried there? Who died in that camp? Today, he shares that information. Go to his website, it's there. Uh, this is the type of information that he will He's my go-to man. Somebody asks a question about the Death Railway, we forward it to Ryan because he's, he'll, he'll respond. He has that depth of caring about the POWs and sharing the information. As a result, a number of years ago, one of the Japanese officers who was there had taken many photographs and gave them to Rod. They are now on his website. You can look at them. You might see a great uncle a grandfather, a father, on that railroad. But at least you'll understand the condition they were working on. You'll see an actual picture of it. 
Could you imagine what we would have if it wasn't for someone like Rod? Likewise, you have Tony Banham, who has spent many decades now researching the men of Hong Kong. Where each unit, each man is identified, and we know what happened to him. Did he live? Did he die? And he knows, you can look and see who died on Lisbon Maru, who survived and then died, who made it up to Japan. It's there. You can, you can look up the man's name or a subunit, you know, the RASC or uh, medical corps, whatever it is you're looking for in Hong Kong, there they are. The Royal Scots, uh, the Canadian Rifles, they're all spelled out. It's a wonderful piece of research and he freely shares it. Same, uh, I go t and take a look at um, Michael Hurst in, Hong, in the uh, Taiwan POW camps. Uh, Michael has spent many, many years researching, trying to find the location of the camps, trying to find out who was there, the Rastas, and slowly but surely has gotten the Taiwan government to not only recognize these camps, but put monuments in these areas to make note that they never died, people never forget. This is where the POWs lived and died fighting for freedom. They did. They were our heroes. They might not have won the Victoria Cross, the George, or any other great medals. They may never have been mentioned in dispatches, but that doesn't mean they weren't heroes. And you do great honor to research them, to get that information down, and then to share it. If you have an interview, if you have a memoir, scan it, digitize it, give it to an archive, at least make the offer to the Imperial Archives and um, the Imperial War Museum. I think Rod Sutterby, who I understand is retiring, uh, has, is very interested in seeing the memoirs and uh, records of the other ranks. A lot of officers there, but not the story of the other ranks. But he's made it seem like a mission to do this, and uh, it's a, we're proud of uh, the effort that he's done. Now, when we get to sharing, it's your reputation is actually going to be enhanced by sharing and giving it away. Somebody else will use it and they'll acknowledge you. And there's numbers of books been, that have been printed in the last few years acknowledging uh, with thanks to the Center for Research or thanks to me personally for photographs. I'm glad to give it away. And it's very nice to get that citation. Well, the same thing. If you see something of interest and you create a small website or a blog, they're free. Get it up on the internet and cite it. Link to those that tell a similar story or can expand your knowledge. If you do an interview or you have an interview, or better yet, ephemera or memorabilia, scan it, write the story of that little piece. For example, the prisoners had to wear a patch with their number on them, the Japanese put the number. They didn't want to know you as Joe Smith or uh, Alistair. Uh, they wanted to know you as prison number 722. And that's how you were referred to. And here's this little patch or a block of wood and that you might have. Now, if you give it to an archive and they want to do an exhibit of the POWs, well, to, a little block of wood sitting there is nothing. It's a little meaning, but if they have the story of that block of wood or that name tag, now it becomes something of real interest to those who want to have an exhibit. And it allows the museums and archives to create exhibits honoring these POWs. If you do not honor them, you will forget them. If it's not written down, you will forget them. If you know a POW or know of a POW's family, Encourage him to write the story of that man. It could be a page, two pages, 60 pages. It matters little. But write the story. Then make copies for every possible relative, every possible local historical society, the National Archive. Merely send it to them. In this way, that man will never, ever be forgotten. And if you forget, it's as if he never lived, as if these stories never lived. The United States lost an army 
on Britannic Regidor. England lost an army, if not more. The Dutch lost 200,000 men and a half million civilians in turn, many of whom died. Well, keep that story alive. If you ask the average person today, did you know that we lost an army in Singapore? That the Americans lost an army on Bataan and Corregidor? They don't even know where Bataan and Corregidor are. They could tell you the name of the latest hip-hop music. They can tell you the name of uh, major stars. Hell, everybody knows Lady Gaga. But you ask them, who won the Victoria Cross as a POW? Who won the Medal of Honor, the American Medal of Honor as a POW? And they were one. But it's important that they not be forgotten. Everyone around them. You might, the, the man who wins the Medal of Honor might have been the captain of a particular patrol plane. But every man in that crew was there. And they also deserve the same medal. But it's not what we do. But we must honor those men, each and every one. And you honor them by sharing the information and giving it away. So today, if I were to ask any one of you here in this room what you should do with the work you've done or plan to do, good. Give it away. And make sure people in your family have that record. Now, I'll tell you a little short story before I end this. In the Great Civil War in the United States in the 1860s, one of the regiments was the Great Illinois Regiment. And one of my wife's great-great-grandfathers wrote the story of the Illinois Regiment. It's a book about yay thick. But it's the only complete story of any regiment of that entire Civil War. And it describes battles in detail in every man. What happened to them? And it's almost priceless. If you try to find a copy of that book today, you're going to be spending in the area of, oh, 20,000 pounds if you spend a nickel. That's how important that has become because it's a definitive history of the war written from the point of view of a unit, a regiment in this case. But it's very, very detailed. Almost every battle, every major battle they were involved in, it's there. It's their story. Tell the same story about your family. You are all descendants here. You are all either POWs or descendants. And if you don't tell the story in writing, it dies. And if you take your information and hoard it, it dies. If you have a family memoir, you have uh, written diaries, scan them, digitize it, write it, prepare a whole story of that person for the family, then take the original with the digitized copy, with a printed copy thereof, and find an archive to donate it to. Not a repository, an archive. There's a difference, and I'll let someone else explain it. But a good archive will have it so that it's available to everyone in the world, and it's properly noted, annotated, and that story can be then researched later on by anyone in 100, 500 years from now. Repository, just to give an example, the American Civil War, or the American POW Museum in uh, Andersonville, Georgia, is a repository. If you give them that type of work, they put it in the box, they put it in the shelf, and they put your name on it. But nobody knows what's in it. No one knows. It's kind of a silly way to do things, but that's what we do. <clears throat> so take your work, find an archive. In my personal opinion, if you're British, I'd certainly start with the Imperial War Museum or start with the unit, um, the unit historians, and have it recorded somewhere, have it put somewhere. It's up to you to honor these men forever, lest we forget. Thank you so much. Good day, and God bless you all. Thank you.